Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. What? My name is Kevin. What? <laughs> is what, it? What's your name? Will. <laughs> it's Vintage Jack Tech Day. It's Old Man Magic Day. That was great. My name's Will. If you couldn't tell from my rasp, uh, rip. Uh, podcast users, uh, you all were great while you were here. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for everything that just happened. Uh, nonetheless, welcome. Thanks for tuning in, listening, watching, doing it, however you're doing it, on YouTube, the podcast app, and SoundCloud. You can also find us and interact with us through the interwebs on Instagram, on Facebook, on Patreon, on Twitch, and occasionally Twitter. Yes. We have one. We have one. We don't do much with it. No, we don't twit. We don't. Yeah. At all. Yeah, we don't twit. We don't. Uh, we don't pander to twits. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, we do actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but here's the deal, guys. We really appreciate all of the support that you guys yeah. give us, no matter where it is, no matter how you watch, mm. you listen, you participate. Mm. Uh, we've had a lot of good community feedback lately, yeah. so we greatly fun. appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Um, many thanks. Many congrats to the winner of the giveaway. Of the last giveaway. Yeah, which um, just wrapped up, really. Yeah, about a week ago. Yeah. Almost a week ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying there's another one coming, but, you know, come on. We, you know, come on. Flashback to the last <laughs> time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway. as you mentioned at the top of the episode, this is the Vintage Deck Tech Day. Oh. Uh, we do like to cycle through these uh, sort of eternal formats mm -hmm. and hit up some different deck lists. Uh, we always do a community deck list as well as our own. Um, all of these generally are taken from MTG Top Eight. We look through uh, some of the some of the best decks in each of the suggestions, things like that, and we sort of culminate our ideas for these decks yeah. and uh, hopefully give some some useful feedback to you guys. So yes. Uh, what do you want to start with our deck or do you want to do you want to start well, with the community deck? We'll get there. Okay. Um I don't know. I'll flip a coin in my brain box. But first, Kev, there's oh. something we got to do. Is there? Oh. You know what we got to do. I totally forgot. It's even it's up the on the screen the and I forgot. I know. Oh my gosh, it's, guys. It's the beginning of the week. I was don't a judge me. Surprise. It's a Monday. I know. It's a Monday. I need it's you guys to hang in there. We do have the card breaths. of the day. Random card Correct. of the day. Uh, on Correct. our Monday and Wednesday episodes, so we'll see what it is. Right now, by the way, there's a mutagenic growth up, and I like mutagenic growth. That's mutagenic good. Growth Let's get that great. again so we can talk about it. Well, it's one in like 15,000. All right, we didn't get it. No. <laughs> we got Ivory Giant. Oh, okay. We were just talking about suspend stuff before the show, so. Uh, this is kind of good. Uh, it, bomb so, and Limited. Ivory Giant. Five colorless. Two white. It's a three, four, four, seven. Yeah. When Ivory Giant comes into play, tap all non-white creatures. But it does have Suspend 5 for one white. Yes. Uh, which, if you don't know what Suspend does, basically you get to pay the Suspend cost. It goes into mm -hmm. Exile with so many Suspend counters on it. Each turn, you remove a counter, and once they're all gone, you get to yep. play it at the beginning of your turn. Um, to me, that makes it worthwhile in a limited format. Sure. Right? Like, yeah. it's a solid common. I don't think it's great, but it's a decent bomb. Um, mm -hmm. it, this is from time spiral where suspend was sort of the normal mechanic there. So, right, a bunch um, of a bunch of stuff had it. This seems okay. I mean, a three, four for seven is garbage, right? Like, well, yeah, no, the stats um, don't work at all. Um, the effect is kind of powerful in limited. In, in limited, sure. Um, I think you're going to hit enough things with that. Yeah. It's fine. Um, but it can also just be kind of dead uh, sure. against like a Boros deck. Let's yep. say they drafted that. You might get half of their board. Mm -hmm. no. I mean, that's the thing. It's a little hit or miss. Um, I do think as a maybe a sideboard bomb. Ah, what do you think about that? I wouldn't put it in a sideboard you wouldn't think at so? all. Really. I mean, if you drafted it. If I draft it, okay, is what I'm then saying. Maybe. Like, if um, you draft it, I don't know that you main deck it, but you could have it as a sideboard option against a creature based deck that yeah. is not white. What do you think? I'm not. I don't hate that. Um, Especially if you're kind of on the ground, yeah. Because as a as a control deck, right, this isn't good at all. It's no, just it's a, really bad. So the tempo you want here, the tempo play, I guess, is after the suspend counters come off, you've got enough combat on the board to either win or just put them, you know, close to zero. Yeah. And it's so. worth noting too that they're going to have to play around mm -hmm. this because once you suspend it, right, they know it's coming. So for right. five turns, they will be able to plan around it, which right. makes it arguably worse i would say because they're they're gonna know oh, it's sure. coming 
Um, so they may not play out their board. They may just stick back and sort of remove stuff. That way you have less on your board instead. Yeah. Um, so it, And it does say tap all non-white creatures. Including your own. So, uh, so there is a downside there yeah. if you are in anything other than mono-white. So I really kind of don't like that. After... Yeah, I think my initial thought was, wow, it's okay. Now it's like, nah, not really. Yeah, I, I kind of don't like it yeah. at all. I yeah, do I'm... like the art. The art's kind of cool. Yeah, and I like giants and titans and big stompy guys. Yeah, that's your kind of card. Yeah, it's fun flavor. <laughs> um, wow. I also, so with the art on these suspend cards, what they always did is they sort of put like this time rift thing where you see part of the creature oh, yeah. it, and then the rest of it is in sort of this t- backwards time portal thing and that's it's really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, little tidbit of info there with suspend. Full flavor. Just mm-hmm. go pepper it in there. I like Bam. it. Um, Kick it up a notch. Yeah, as a as a card though, it's not great. Pretty no. bad. Yeah. Um, no. uh, maybe in a filler white deck. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I would say. I'll say that as a filler. Card. I mean, white weenies. Maybe. No. No. Anyway, no, you don't play it. <laughs> um, all right, moving on now to our deck text. Right. Would you like to start out with ours, or do you want to go community? I'll start. Okay. We'll tell. Uh, then we'll tell them what the community picked. What will we Pete will. What we you picked can do this. from the <laughs> Yes. It's, that was tricky. Which is going to be given away in the title anyway, but hey. Shh. For those of you who stuck Shh. around this long, we appreciate don't, it. <laughs> don't break the fourth wall on a Monday. <laughs> Come on. All right. So, yes, reading the title, you will see Planeswalker Control is one of those decks. Yep. And it's the one I'm covering. All right. One we're talking about. Um, in a format where sometimes you can just kind of win out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to have control decks running around. Control is a huge part of vintage. Yes. It hits most decks. Right? And even, as you'll see in a second, even in control decks, you've got that really ridiculous win con. Oh, yeah. Always. Let's talk about that. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the first, uh, we'll, we'll go over the lands because those can be relevant. Uh, library is in no, here. Of course. You, you sort of it. like the 10th power piece. In you my could opinion. say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Minimo, School at Water's Edge. I've never known. I don't know how to say that. Minimo. <laughs> I've no clue. Mianmo. <laughs> Minamo. Maybe that's it. Minamo, School at Water's Edge. Uh, it. Uh, you can untap, target legendary permanents. Tap, untap. Yeah, that which seems pretty good. Yeah, it can work with a few things. Yeah. Um, four Scalding Tarn, four Seat of the Synod, one Talarian Academy, and two Volcanic oh, Islands. Talarian Academy. Oh yeah. So good. <laughs> great card. Great channel. And it's cool to see the artifact lands. Yes, it by is. By the way, um, I really like that. Artifact lands, I mean, they work with everything. They were what you're yeah. back to talk about. Uh, <laughs> they work with so much. Um, and they were arguably super busted, of course. Oh, yeah. They so. are definitely super busted. Yes. Um, hence, you only see them in vintage. <laughs> right, because that's... Are they legal in Legacy? I don't actually know. I don't know, but you don't really see them that no, I know of. I'm not um, certain that they are. I, I know. I mean, obviously, they're banned in Modern um they were i believe banned in standard. yeah they were banned. they were like yeah. emergency banned or something yes. because it just made affinity broken as crap <laughs> weird um, that it still didn't fix affinity yeah. <laughs> strange weird how that curious. works curious way to be there ornithopter doing the most <laughs> no kidding yeah affinity huh. yeah we'll do we'll do, we'll affinity do a deck one of these on days <laughs> uh, but yeah so those are the lands 13 lands but i mean it's vintage so you're gonna have various ways to get plenty of mana you don't need that many lands and it's worth noting also Tolarian academy doesn't tap for one right no like, it taps for as many artifacts it's sort of like have. okay you have five lands with Tolarian academy yeah usually especially in vintage yeah, you, yeah yeah you'll have a ton uh so let's talk about uh the creature package in All this right. control deck there are three creatures i'm excited I'm, I'm gonna start with the little guys two trinket mage okay you know a it's card i love a tutor yeah for really cheap artifacts it is really good uh even better in vintage you know okay tangent we've talked Bring numerous up. times about favorite cards in magic okay are you about to say that trinket no no no, okay. no no okay we've talked specifically about what our favorite creatures are in magic okay and nighthawk yeah yours is nighthawk um, and if we're talking like non-rare you know nothing mm-hmm. crazy busted or anything like that i'm not saying trinket mage is but it's up there yeah. i really like trinket mage yeah so here's the reason why the the times i get to play with it are in cube which we just had True. this past weekend yeah, a really fun um, cube 
Yeah, it With was awesome. With all the boys from It Resolves. Yeah, everybody from It Resolves was yeah, here, Marks which is Alex? for the first time ever, I think. Yeah, in that the was same pretty room, epic. Playing the same game. And uh, we won the first, you know, whatever. We we well, annihilated. Um, <laughs> we we played two at a giant cube. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that was fun. Two at a giant draft and then a sealed format. Yes, we did draft first, which you and I were on a team, yeah. and then we switched it up. Alex and I were on a team versus you and Parks. You guys, yeah. we won one game, I think, but you guys yeah. bested us two out of three. Um, Touchy. And then the other two gentlemen played some commander games later on. Uh, which was really interesting to watch. But oh, it was great. I was also really tired at that point. We stayed up to like four in the morning. So yeah, very <laughs> true. Very late. Um, it's fun. Though. But the the only times I actually get to play Trinket Mage are in Cube, and yeah. it it does some work in Cube. So the things that it hits, for instance, mm-hmm. uh, first of which things like Mana Crypt, things like Soul Ring, uh, any of yeah. the cheap you know Mana Ramp stuff, that's all good. That helps you. It's whatever. However, one of my favorite things to get with it is Skull Clamp. Because Skull Clamp and any 1 1 token generator, that's one of my favorite combos in Cube because it's repeated card draw, which means you don't have to waste as many slots on cantrips because you just get to have Skull Clamp and token generators and you get to do it. And so that's one of my favorite combos to utilize. And Trinket Mage just helps you get there. And so. That I'm not saying it is my favorite, but it is one of my favorite just basic creatures. I really, really like Trinket Mage. It's a good card. Yeah. Underrated card it. a little bit. No, I'm into it. Um I like it a lot. It's just it feels vanilla. It does until you thing. get skull clamp and then you get to draw eight cards off of it. That's <laughs> probably fair. Or infinite cards with a lot of skull. Oh weird. Saying. And Astronaut's Altar. Oh true. Which true. is well Touchy. also in cube. Touchy. Good point. <laughs> um so yeah. Let's get back to the deck tech. Yeah, yeah. Tangent. Tangent, Sorry, man. Guys. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. Two trinket mage. Yeah. And remember those busted wind cons? <laughs> Blightsteel Colossus. Weird. Has that touched vintage at all? <laughs> Show me on the Blightsteel where vintage touched you. Other way around. Show me on the format where Blightsteel touched you. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? You never... With a doll? Never mind. We're family friendly. Yeah, we're family friendly. We can't talk about that. But it's a funny joke, right? It is a funny Blight joke. Blightsteel broke vintage for a while. Uh, let it be known. Where you could turn one of Blightsteel sometimes um, in certain decks. I mean, in vintage, it's definitely possible. Right, right? That's, what like, that's what I'm talking about. It's not in vintage. that difficult. I mean, it's no. it's hard enough that it's not going to happen all the time. But like, if you have a Black Lotus or an Amox or a Land or something like you just have it, right? And if you have Tinker, obviously. Exactly. Which is, Speaking of I'm which, assuming, in the deck. <laughs> that's how you get Blind Seal. Yeah, you don't hard cast 12 mana. Usually. So, what I think is really funny about Vintage mm. is in decks like this, where it's a Planeswalker control deck, mm-hmm. because the Tinker Blight Seal combo is so cheap in the way of taking up slots in your deck and so Two easy cards. in terms of how many artifacts you're going to play, so you're going to be able to get it. You see it and just it's just jammed into decks. If and, it plays yeah. blue, it probably plays it. Like it's yeah. weird. It's awesome, but yeah. it's weird. Yes, I don't know about weird. It kind of just makes sense because it's almost I mean, it too does. good. Yeah. Yeah. Blight Steel is one of the strongest cards in Magic. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, if for if you don't know, it's got Trample and Infect. It's also indestructible, and it's got the Emrakul Shuffle Your Yard effect. If it goes into a graveyard, uh, or it's just it's just blight steel actually forgive me but oh. it still can't like yeah. die yeah so that's great it's insane yeah it's, it's busted um and of course with infect yeah you just if they don't have a blocker or if they have a singular one one blocker they just well even still yeah, uh you still because trample over blight steel can't die yeah and you've got plenty of ways to cast spells from your graveyard it runs a snapcaster in this um or no, that was the other list. I looked at. Yeah, doesn't okay. have Snapcaster, but there just are... Just kidding, no Snapcaster. No. But there are still plenty <laughs> of ways to get cards back yeah, and, yeah. and cast things. So, he's he's too good. He's too good. <laughs> uh, moving on with the rest of the deck. It is a control deck, so you see plenty of blue-flavored spells. Yep. Uh, Ancestral Recall, duh. Yeah. Um, four Force of Will, duh. duh. <laughs> uh, one gets Acting Probe, Kind of uh, cool. interesting yeah. i like it yeah that's fine um it's nice to have that information it's especially important in vintage when you have yes. to play around stuff like force Good misstep point. things like that yeah 
So even if you're not taking a thing, just being able to basically for free look at someone's hand and see yeah. what you're doing for that turn. Well, it sets you up, right? Like if you're mm-hmm. about to tinker and you have Gitaxian Probe, <laughs> you point. might as well go ahead and Gitaxian Probe just to know if the, if the pathway is safe, yeah. right? Like Because if they have Force of Will and you don't have any counter spells, they're going to force it, mm-hmm. right? Like Oh, well, they should... You yeah. force tinker. I mean... <laughs> so yeah, because you, they're getting black steel <laughs> yeah i mean that's what they're getting so you 100%. you have to force it and 100%. Uh, knowing that they don't have any counter magic is super super helpful right yeah. like it means you have a safe play to get a blight steel yeah definitely and you take it like of course at 10 out of 10 times yeah uh four mental misstep of course coming yep. in misstep hitting tons in vintage uh four paradoxical outcome which i really like cool include yes i love this great way to refill your hand better in like storm and vintage i think yeah it's its own deck and storm yeah but it's it's still it's solid um you if you don't know it's a newer card so in terms of vintage it might not be on everyone's mind return any number of target non-land non-token permanents you control to their owner's hands draw a card for each card return that way yeah right it's epic it's sweet bounce all the moxes draw cards for those moxes replay those moxes yes it's and get nice. all the mana while you do it oh yeah you tap all the moxes play it yeah <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> boom boom it's great it's awesome uh repeal also as a one of a one of repeal a very return good target non-land permanent with converted mana cost x to its owner's hand and draw a card you need to bounce something crazy you need to bounce a mox there yep. you go it's perfect uh four thought cast which makes sense i you don't usually see him in a playset. No, right. No. Uh, but really, it's, you don't see it much in vintage at all. I don't. Not I don't. no, not a ton. But um, it makes so much sense. Yeah, right? it, it like, definitely <laughs> does. Uh, it's got affinity, of course. You draw two cards. It's five CMC, but with affinity, it's usually gonna be one. Yeah, to be honest. Um, one but, mana draw two yeah. is awesome. It's sweet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of the power nine, time walk. Whoo! I mean, you're oh, playing God. blue, so you're gonna Take play an time extra walk. Turn after this one for two. <laughs> so broken who thought that that was a good idea i don't i don't know i was just in my head trying to roll my brain like around that. i imagine the early days of magic they get together in their boardroom they're like guys we need some new ideas for cards what have you got but that's the thing isn't it there wasn't a board <laughs> there wasn't like a competitive scene yet the living room of andrew garfield there you go not andrew garfield <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's bad. What was his name? Richard. Richard Garfield. That guy. <laughs> Why did I think it? I saw Spider Man recently. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Andrew Garfield helped make magic. Yep. And then almost destroy yet again Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, we're saved now. I like. I like the new Spider Man. He's come from the darkness to be a to be a spider clad Avenger. What's up, guys? Anyway. Yeah. He's the best fighter. So, Andrew Garfield <laughs> walks in. I know, I did it on purpose. Oh. Okay. I wanted him to walk I in. Say, I wanted him to be the one to walk in and be like, hey, guys, let's time walk. That's why no one likes him. Yeah. Um, it's his fault. So, Richard. <laughs> this conversation is degraded so, so much. So, Richard Garfield helped uh-huh. make time walk, I'm guessing. No, he definitely did. Yeah, uh, he definitely made the did. power nine. And then the. What are the cycle of three? The card, the cantrips that are to all do three things. Uh, uh recall bolt um and then other ones <laughs> oh giant growth is one yes um uh what? swords no not swords uh-uh. flashers i don't remember whites i don't or, either uh blacks i don't remember blacks either huh no, i don't, I don't remember them. i don't think about that wow yeah no, i don't either um, i know those three yeah recall being of course Richard. the best giant growth being the worst <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't i remember um all being pretty dang good <laughs> um, for, uh all right so getting back from time walk time walk just takes my brain off of anything yeah talk about time twister uh each player shovels his or her hand and graveyard into her into his or her library then draw seven cards it's kind of a reset yeah yeah, yeah it's nice again really good in storm kind of odd for me to see it here but uh, yeah i don't really know about that one yeah but that's okay um, it does do nice things, and I guess in decks that decks that can mess with your graveyard and mess with their graveyard, it's yeah, it's good to yeah. have. I think it's a good um, solid and it's reset. a one of which well, yeah, yeah. And again, that's your way to get Tinker back. It's your way to sure you know yeah sure Tinker duh we just talked about yeah it, of course and then transmute artifact uh, sacrifice an artifact search your library for an artifact card if that's card is 
Wow. If that card CMC is less than or equal to the sacrifice artifact's converted mana cost, put it onto the battlefield. If it's greater, you may pay X, where X is the difference. If you do, put it onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard, then shuffle your library. Blech. That's a wordy card. It is a wordy it's card. It's also a pseudo tinker. Yeah. Um, so It's like a much cool. worse tinker, but it works. Uh, yeah. I don't know about much worse because it's still like... It's so pretty good. It's I mean, it is really good. It's a powerful effect, but I'm just yeah. saying, like, you can't transmute for Blight Steel if you don't have the difference in mana. So, if, no, for instance, no. if you sack a of Mox, course. you have to pay the full price for Blight Steel still. Yes. Like, and I'm not, I mean, that's like worst case scenario, but like, sure. that could happen. You know what I mean? So, no, absolutely. And absolutely that being said, can. with things like Telerian Academy, um, hopefully you'd be able to get it up helps. there anyway. Yeah. So, but it, it's a very powerful card. Just, I would say it much worse tinker uh yeah compared to tinker but it can still cheat out those scary yes. artifact guys yeah uh and then I, it goes without saying all the moxes are in this <laughs> black lotus is in it yeah kind of we'll gloss over that uh dak faden is pretty neat uh great in vintage steals oh artifacts. yeah Super steals good. blight steel does steal blight steel nice um <sighs> expedition map which is kind of interesting pulls out Telerian academy I that makes sense I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you want to get Telerian Academy. It's sort of the backbone, it seems, of this deck. Uh, well, yeah. It just it turns on so much. Yeah. Just having, I'm not going to say unlimited, but tons of mana. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of helps everything. Uh, <laughs> one Jace the Mind Sculptor. Finally, besides Dak, some more Planeswalkers. <laughs> one Jace. Uh, we talked about those. Mana Crypt, <laughs> Mana Vault, Memory Jar. You know. I like Memory Jar. It's I like it too. It's. With Vintage, it's very hard to explain why things are indexed because they kind of just are. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. There's not a Vintage deck without the Moxes in there. Yeah. Um, Sensei's Top is interesting. Two of Sensei's Divine and Cop. I like that. Um, it's it's a great card. Uh, I don't think anyone undervalues it. Uh, I think, if anything, people overvalue it. But I'm not in Vintage. I might be one of those people. I think it's, it's strong enough to be in most control so, decks in Vintage. I think in Vintage, it's great. Yeah. Um, where I do think people overvalue it is in cube. And while I think it's very good uh, in cube, it doesn't, in my opinion, it's not the game breaking card that it can be in vintage. So for instance, in vintage mm. miracles, it makes the deck. True. Um, in cube, and in fact, we ran into this. Yeah. Uh, we were against basically two tops because one of our opponents played the top and then the other metamorphed it and they yeah. both had top. They still lost. It didn't win them the game. Um, whereas in no, in but... in miracles, it sort of gets you to the winning the game portion. What they were able to do that was pull answers when they didn't. And it was very sweet. Them. It that's... worked. It helped, but yeah, it didn't break the game for me. Well, that's what top really does. Is it? It, it was just... also at its best there. Let it be known because they both had a top. Like no, that's, <laughs> that's a little yeah. insane. But it it sets you up to kind of plan better again in the game of information top helps you sure a ton sure um so i i love top for that definitely tezzeret the seeker yeah another planeswalker yeah bunch of artifact stuff <laughs> duh uh <laughs> time vault which is pretty cool oh i like that uh oh yeah time vault sweet wait can, is there an infinite turn combo oh yeah voltaic key yeah okay yeah there is yeah, an yeah. infinite turn there you go. <laughs> Voltaic key. <laughs> last, last card, Voltaic key. Sorry. Uh, infinite turn combo. No, that's that's yeah, fine. It's that's great, right? Good. <laughs> um, so yes, vintage being the the format where you get to break magic yeah. and do anything. Yeah. Usually, there you go. I wish I had the the financial support to play vintage. Whoa! How cool would it be to like play a solid vintage game? I just I don't have you the can, money to, but you can it'd be do it so cool. very well on online. You can. MTGO, it's a lot cheaper. Dual lands are not $300. For instance, Black Lotus <laughs> being 7000 near mint <laughs> yeah. is uh, only 50 ticks. Yep, it's about 50. Yeah, it, it's a lot cheaper to play Vintage online. And I think better because so many people don't play Vintage, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, it's really, it's one of those things where, like, in real life, you'll find a lot of standard players you'll find a decent number of modern players oh definitely. uh people drafting all the time doing stuff like that but vintage is probably the one format above all else that people either can't play or just don't want to play uh in sure. real life solely because financial support it's super expensive how much yes. is that deck 
Um, this deck is twenty five thousand dollars. There you go. Okay, that's so, rounding down. Yeah, that's the thing. Like nobody's spending twenty five thousand dollars unless you are just all in on magic. That's great. I envy you. But like, I can't spend twenty five thousand dollars on a deck. I don't like. I wouldn't. No. How uh, much is it online? Um, six hundred twenty four ticks. Yeah. So about the price of like your very bottom modern deck or sure. like a standard deck or something um i think, I think it's a little more is it I than think, a standard I deck i don't know because i don't play standard i like throwing that in oh, every yeah. time i can <laughs> just because oh, it makes you yeah. mad <laughs> it frustrates me because it just, really does yeah it's about three good standard decks yeah right because they're around 200 ticks Fair they're enough. standard like standard reflects the prices anyway real life pretty well yeah i online. think so um so yeah and in your sideboard you've got any number of stony silence um cards like containment mage things yep. that just turn stuff off containment priest that's what i meant just answers <laughs> yeah i mean that's what you always have yeah it's tricky Sweet. it's tricky to talk about vintage it is um, a little tricky um and going into the next deck uh the community deck basically what i did is look through the deck list and like things were pretty well set right like there's less variance in yeah. vintage it's not like you look up a deck and there's tons of cards that have been changed out for other cards like that doesn't happen very often unless it's a metagame call yeah um specifically i can think of one time where there was a shop stack hint hint um that ran sulfur elemental or no i'm sorry it was actually an eldrazi shop stack something like that that ran sulfur elemental solely because they knew they were going up against mentor decks mm. and that's a oh. back-breaking card against mentor but generally a shop stack is just a shop stack right like or planeswalker control is kind of just planeswalker control so it is does make it a little difficult on the like variant side of things because there just really isn't much like and it's my turn for a tangent you ready okay. yeah naming decks <laughs> the deck i just read you has four planeswalkers in it <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And They're one good, really giant metal colossus. I mean, why is it called Planeswalker Control? Huh? I promise you, there's a reason. I don't know what it is. It's because it's I a feel control like, deck that has Planeswalkers. But in it. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's not, not even got Vryn's Prodigy. It's just got four vanilla planeswalkers i say vanilla they're all exceptional but like, well, yeah. they're not cards that aren't included in other decks. They're uh Tesseret is you can see it he's probably the one that's most rare yeah out of the other one and he is a win condition as true um true but he could be a win condition in affinity he could be well, a, yeah he could be a win con in any mud hint hint deck <laughs> he's not though no but i'm saying he could be <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah so it, it's not like he doesn't make sense in vintage <laughs> i i don't know i get what you mean though i think naming decks <laughs> well so living it the... makes sense yeah, because that's the wing con. Exactly. Um, dredge makes sense. Why isn't his blight steel control? <laughs> that's my question. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Ask the creator of the deck, who I do not know personally. I'll, I'll send him an email. <laughs> it was probably also Andrew Garfield. Um. All right. So, <laughs> for the community deck, I hope he plays vintage. Stumbles across. I this hope episode. he just plays magic. <laughs> I don't think he does, but. Um, all right, so uh, as always, we did post on Tuesday um, asking for vintage deck suggestions for right. deck techs. Uh, we got a few. Uh, vintage is usually our worst producing, you know, comments and makes, stuff like makes that. Makes sense. It's the most makes fringe sense. format, um, um, which you should try online. You should try online. Uh, it is really fun. Uh, you should also try vintage cubing, things like that, because oh, you that. can get a feel for it. Vintage cube is very, very sweet. Yeah, it's awesome. Very sweet. Um, so we did get a few suggestions, and the one that we went with is Ravenger Shops, uh, as suggested by Dirty Floor Matt. Heck yeah, Dirty Floor Matt. Dirty Floor Matt. Dirty. Well, Dirty Floor Matt because Matt is his name. I was gonna say if your name is Matt, that's how you can say it. Yeah, M A T T. That's how it's spelled. Anyway, so basically, so the crazy. general template of this is a mud deck uh, with Ravenger. Um, and so mud as a whole takes up about 27% of the meta. Yeah. Mud, as according to MTG Goldfish. Mud being a really top eight. just nasty good deck. It hoses so many things. It yes. makes control 10 times worse. Yeah. Uh, 
it has a really good outpowering against things like white weenie mm -hmm. because it kind of does the same thing as white weenie like the thalia effects and stuff and sure. um it just outpowers them like okay. they're playing hate bears you're playing giant lodestone golem and ravengers and stuff like that so uh it's a very powerful deck it's a very fast deck because of some of the lands which we'll get into first um and again it just hoses things so right. we'll go into the lands first 18 lands for this deck it's a little high for vintage it is a little high but i do think with this deck it makes a lot of sense sure. so for ancient tomb ah excuse me guys i'm a little sick today me a little sick proceed Oh, no comment. Four ancient tombs. Uh, two mana for one land is awesome. Uh, four Mishra's factory and four Mishra's workshop, uh, producing a lot of mana. And one's oh. a man land. Oh yeah, yeah. Tons. So, uh, one strip mine, one academy, and four wasteland. So the hate is real on the lands. Oh yeah, and I love it. And yeah, and that's pretty common again in vintage. Yeah, yeah. Where and you get to blow up lands almost for free. Yeah. And so with this, uh, there is two Crucible in the sideboard, so you can get the Crucible lock, uh, which is pretty fun. So that being said, uh, guys, I'm so sorry. You're I'm really fun? sick. Yeah, you, need yeah. some, you need some OJ. I, I, you need some so here's C. the deal. I think it's allergies, so I took allergy medicine. I also thought it might be a cold, so I also took cold medicine. Neither one does a dang thing. That's my life no. right now. No, it, do, it does a great job of like unstuffing you. Yeah, but I think you're feeling the effects of that. Man. I think maybe um, it's been like this for like the past couple of days. So. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, bud. It happens. It sucks. So if I'm a, I apologize. Apologize if this is a bit apologize of apologize when you deck. dance guiltily. I apologize. <laughs> really. Anyway, um, this is a creature based deck in a lot of. <laughs> I'm sorry, in a lot of ways, this is a creature-based deck. Um, it runs about 24 creatures, four Ravengers, obviously. Great creature. Uh, it makes any creature destruction ten times worse. Definitely. Uh, four Foundry Inspector, which is really interesting to me. It makes yeah. all of your artifacts cost less, which is cool. Um, makes sense. It makes sense, right? Like, it's decent. Yeah. Uh, one Hangerback Walker, which I think is quite good. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to modular those tokens on, or those those one one counters onto it, and then getting a bonus from it is great. Yeah. Uh, one Lodestone Golem, as I believe you're only allowed one now. Um, yeah. I think they restricted it because Lodestone Golem is a little broken. Um, <laughs> and that has the Thalia effect, right? Like it makes mm -hmm. everything else uh, non creature spells cost one more. Uh, two Metamorph. Uh, two more Lodestone Golem. Uh, two more of anything, really, and True. that's what's great about them. Yeah, uh, Metamorph four great. Phyrexian Revoker. I love Revoker. I love Revoker too. It's a catch-all. Yes. Um, it. I don't ever really feel bad playing Revoker. No. It's no. it's so solid. You can hose so many things with Revoker. Um, yeah. and technically you have six copies because you have Metamorph, which is kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, you also get one Worm Coil Engine, four Walking Ballista. Uh, yeah. One Sundering Titan as a way to blow up some more lands, nice. in case you didn't have enough of that. <laughs> and two Precursor Golems, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, so, very large creature package, all very, very powerful creatures. Yeah, hefty guys. All don't cost any colored mana, which means you can play them very early because you have uh, Factory and Ancient Tomb. So, yeah. pretty good. Oh, yeah. Pretty Do you good. Have, uh, did you say Metalworker was in there? Uh, no. Huh. It is not. I like Metalworker. I do like Metal Worker, um, but it is it's not in here. Okay. Um, and if so there's if there's a card making a run against Nighthawk for favorite creature, yeah, it's Ballista. Is it really? Heck yeah. I mean, I like Ballista. That's interesting, though. Ballista's sweet. <laughs> it's very powerful. We talked about it so many times. Ballista, you pick him up. You play Ballista. Yeah. He can yeah, go in Ballista. anything. That's the great thing about it. He yeah. does go in anything, and he is going in everything. Like <laughs> Every format. It's Tons of awesome. Yeah. yeah. Ballista is so good. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so, for others, other spells. Oh, right, uh, right, right. Which is mostly just artifact stuff. You have 18 slots. One Lotus, obviously. One Chalice of the Void to be able to hose other strategies. Um, mm. Again, against like a, a White Weenie deck, Chalice on two, they don't get to play. Pretty um, much. Yeah, it's just, it's insane. Uh, one Mana Crypt, again, Mana Ramp. One of each Mox, no surprise there. One Soul Ring, all Artifact Ramp. Four Sphere of Resistance, 
Hmm. Four cool. Thorn of Amethyst, cool. Amethyst, excuse me, and one Trinisphere. Uh, again, all of these hosing effects. Like yeah. you want to make it really difficult for your opponent to do a dang thing. It's just vicious. Yeah, it's a monstrous deck. Uh, it really does. It it's it's a lock, right? Like it's a sort of a prison style deck that beats down in the end. Like it's really mm-hmm. really cool when you get to play it. Uh, you do get to just lock people out of the game fairly often, uh, yeah. where they're just trying to play catch up the whole time. And you don't get to. And, and you're with things... already on to other condiments. Other much better <laughs> condiments. Yes. Um, with things like Thorn and Sphere uh, out on the field and then you Wastelanding their lands, that puts them back basically two Jeez. turns. Um, and so uh, your Wastelands and your Strip Mines are valued that much more, which is amazing. So how prevalent, how common yeah. are the Thorns? The um, In Mud Decks, yeah. they're kind of the backbone. Gotcha. Um, that effect solely mm-hmm. on making other things more expensive it hoses all of the control decks which makes it so you're able to just go off and play big things right like that's all that you need to be able to do um because again in the end you're beating down that's how you okay. win um and so play these thorn effects strip mine wasteland their lands they no longer get to play anything and you're miles ahead at gotcha. that point so it's a powerful powerful deck uh okay. And again, sideboard two Crucible of Worlds to get that lock, uh, if you would like it. Uh, really good against yeah, the land still it. decks. <laughs> yeah, uh, two Dismember, one Ghost Quarter, four Cage, uh, Graft Digger's Cages. Oh yeah, okay. Another Precursor Golem, uh, two Ratchet Bombs, two Relic of Progenitus. I like Ratchet Bomb. Yeah, I like Ratchet Bomb too. And another Worm Coil Engine, again, if you need some life gain or something like that, or if there's a problematic creature like Blightsteel Colossus. Huh. <laughs> huh. Weird, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, he's indestructible. He though. is, so yeah. I guess that doesn't really. Yeah. It's just a good, solid creature. But yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, again, there's very little variance in this deck. Mm-hmm. The, a lot of the slots are, are spoken for, so you don't get much in the way of uh, switching cards out, things like that. So the thorn de- or the thorn effects are the backbone, and the rest of it is beat down into the face a lot. That's what you do. Yeah. That's what you like to do. I really like it. It's such a good value deck. Um, again, thank again, you for Dirty Floor sure. Matt uh, for suggesting that deck. Uh, there were plenty of other suggestions, all of which we will eventually get to. Um, so we do appreciate it. Yeah. An episode in the future. Yeah. We'll exactly. Um, but with that, <laughs> uh, we do move on to our crack a pack series as always we do have our goal cards but before that we do want to thank our sponsor Grand Slam uh, for the fantastic support they've given us yeah. along with uh, this thing which we'll get to in a little bit um, we do this? yeah weird right two two of them um, <laughs> we really appreciate all the support that they've given us they've done a ton in the way of uh, supporting the channel oh, yeah. uh, helping us oh grow this channel uh and and supply cards for us so yeah, we really, really appreciate it uh, um grand slam great group of guys yes and lady there's a dog there that's a lady yeah v i can't believe by the way you didn't tell me about v what do you mean in the future uh last time i went to grand slam did you not know about no him? i thought you knew about him i had no idea hmm. she's and an awesome dog up walks this friendly behemoth of a dog she is huge and real nice I don't know what kind of dog she is. Um, Greyhound? She, no. No, not Greyhound. She looks like... I don't, I don't know dog um, stuff. <laughs> uh, she looks like a Rottweiler, but she's got really long hair, so that makes me think she's not a Rottweiler. I don't know. Yeah. She's that, super nice, though. She is really God, nice. She's she a sweet dog. right up to me, and it's all about that, that uh, pet and lifestyle. Kev, yeah. we forgot to mention a goal card, though. We do have, have our those. goal cards. Mine is Ramunap Excavator. Excavator. Uh, excavator. I was gonna say Ramonap is not the well, not the word you're in trouble <laughs> with there. Uh, um, and mine, of course, Wildfire Eternal. I ooh. think he's really fun. Yeah. Oh, Very that's weird. I didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about this card before the show, also. Um, so what'd you get? Uh, Uncage the Menagerie. A very good card. Sort that's of. that's the thing. It's on the brink of being good. What we said about it before the show is it is so almost good. Yeah. Uh, because you want it to do so much more. Yes, so that's for exactly right. two green, <laughs> one X colorless, search your library for up to X creature cards with different names that each have convert a mana cost X, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. 
Yeah. Like, I would so much rather search for 10... One ones. Of whatever. L's, yeah. You know? And... But I can't. I have. I would have to search for uh, 10, 10 costing things. Yeah, that being Creatures said, in elves, I do think being able to fetch up like four elvish mystics. Or, you can't. Or, or, I'm sorry, no, no, no. Crap, you're right. Yeah. Dang. Right? Yeah, they made right? that so bad. So almost okay. good. Although, yeah, never mind. In, I, in, and you couldn't fetch four anyway. It'd have to be one. That's stupid. God, that's annoying. Right? That card's annoying. <laughs> you so almost want it. It's, oh, it's right there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, but yeah. in Commander, this is awesome. Yeah. In Commander, you I'm sure there are combos. Like, there has to yeah, be. Yeah, and you get around uh, the different names clause, yeah. so that's fine. Uh, you do put them into your hand, but even so. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about a limited aspect, or do you want to talk about your pack first? Uh, I'll, pa- I'll talk about my rare very quickly. Sure. I got Hour of Eternity. Um yeah. I don't know how I feel about Hour of I don't Eternity. really like it that much, to be honest. It's a really expensive way to do, to do things that other cards stuff. do way better. Yeah, like, you get this effect anyway with Eternalize. Yeah. Um, and you have to have a lot of mana to make this work. Like, for five mana, you get one. Like, that just feels real bad. I mean, it gets better the later the game goes. But, in, like, in a limited environment, if you're playing a late game oh, deck, limited? that's really bad. You like don't you don't it. want that you don't um, touch it in blue green ramp it might be okay though maybe maybe so but do you have to exile it's creature cards okay creature cards correct uh so as far as other cards in my pack i did get a torment of scarabs which i've heard is insane in limited uh yeah which is probably my pick God, i also mean. got a frontline devastator a thorn moloch and an unsummon uh but i do think torment of scarabs is my pick so What'd you get? I'm trying to. I really, really, really like Doomfall. Um, oh, Doomfall's amazing. Yeah. But you know me. I, I like getting my bombs. <laughs> oh, but dude. Doomfall's so good. Doomfall's it's hard great. not to consider it. Yeah. Um, I like Spellweaver Eternal. I'd hope that come back. Sure. Um, Granite Take Titan is honestly a really solid card in limited. Yeah, he's great. Uh, five four for six menace cycling two. He's not really Brisk. any downside. Um, no, exactly. Um, consign is also not bad. Sure. Um, it's a bounce and then discard late game to just put them off a of play. Uh, that being said, Doomfall is the strongest card in this deck. Doomfall is so good. In this pack, not deck. So, yeah. It, it just does everything you want it to. Yep. I love Doomfall. So, Excellent good card. call. Good call. Thanks, buddy. All right. Well, thank you again to Grand Slam for those packs uh, and any future packs and stuff like that. But uh, we do need to just let's address just bring this up real quick let's, let's um we teased this in the last episode we're kind of teasing again a little bit uh this isn't the day it goes out but wednesday uh we got some stuff coming for you wednesday dwagon dwagons two dwagons you do the same <laughs> uh, oh yeah wednesday is gonna be big yeah we're be we're teaming up It'll with grand fun. slam and uh we we got some cool stuff that we would like to get out to you guys uh we'll get you more information on that on wednesday you will see the post i'm sure uh we'll also talk about it in the episode so stay tuned for that oh yeah uh um, it's gonna be loads of fun yeah um and i'm really stoked about yes. this I really There's like these. not much that I can say right now, so I will I will hold my tongue until the next episode. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, we hope you guys are. We hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I apologize, I'm sick. It's okay. It's really um, cool. Yeah, I dropped my tongue. <laughs> um, but we do hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you again for all of your community suggestions. We hope that you will take part in the next community suggestion post, uh, which do. I believe is legacy goes out. The deck, yes. It's Legacy, legacy. Uh, which will go up tomorrow, so you'll be able to post stuff about that. Uh, we also have our question of the week, which we haven't decided yet. So stay tuned for that. Be on our stu- be on Instagram mostly for that. That's where most of our suggestions right. come from. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again for sticking with us. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and I think we're going to get out of here. Heck yeah. I got some lunch to eat. <laughs> My name is Kevin. My name is Will. This has been It Resolves. <laughs>